citizens and students remember the ones that lost their lives to suicide during the annual suicide prevention walk in downtown San Luis Obispo. The Chinese Student Association had its biggest social event of the year this weekend. Broadcasting from Studio 300 on... Hello and welcome to this 30-minute special edition of Mustang News. I'm Allison Royal. And I'm Allison Edmonds. Mustang News starts now. Cal Poly students graduating this fall may be surprised to see a new mandatory commencement fee. Students will automatically be charged the $90 fee once they have completed 75% of the coursework toward their degree. The university will collect the fee whether or not a student plans to participate in the ceremony. The fee increase will include the 10 tickets students are given for their graduation ceremony. The fee does not include a cap and gown or any other items students may want to purchase. It did increase to $90. Um, it was actually the first increase that we've had on our campus for commencement in over a decade. So it was due time for, for a fee increase to cover all of the expenses related to commencement. Students who receive financial aid can have the fee waived. San Luis Obispo hosted a fundraising campaign for suicide awareness and prevention on Saturday. Many of us here know firsthand the impact of suicide and your presence here today honors the memory of the loved ones we've lost. The fundraising event, which includes a five-mile walking marathon, was hosted by the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention. According to its website, the organization's main goal is to understand and prevent suicide through research, education, and advocacy. It also plans on having these marathons in Santa Monica, Bakersfield, and Pasadena. In addition, the AAFSP organizes walks on school campuses, but Cal Poly will not take part in the program this year. The Digital Commons at Cal Poly achieved a major milestone this month. The archives reached its 10 millionth digital download since it launched in 2008. Cal Poly is one of few to reach these numbers. The digital archives provide access to many research projects and papers written by Cal Poly students and faculty. Visitors from 160 countries can access any of the 31,000 items in the archives. We are making our faculty research available worldwide, our student scholarship available worldwide. So we have people looking at things that are happening here at Cal Poly um, from all over the world. The 10 millionth download was on a paper recently uploaded by Nicola Leshawn, who was a forestry science major. The Digital Commons also house many historical papers that help to shed light on San Luis Obispo's history. You can access the archives by going on to digitalcommons.calpoly.edu. There's a new club on campus trying to set a world record. A group of students are combining their brains and their passion for building vehicles to create a completely solar-powered car, and they're aiming for a world record. Trying to become the world's fastest solar-powered car. Um, I believe we're trying to get to 65 miles per hour by June of 2017. Prove Lab, or Prototype Vehicles Laboratory, is interdisciplinary. Besides engineering majors, they're looking for students majoring in anything from business to communications to help get the word out. Our goal is to work, work on marketing our name and reaching out into the community to get this to be more than just uh, you know, a build project, but something that's focused on education and outreach to people in the community. For more information on getting involved, you can go to ProveLab.com. After a department-wide vote, a familiar face has taken the reins as chair of the marketing program in the Business College. Norm Boren was chair of the marketing program between 2002 and 2007. Before the start of fall quarter, Boren was selected by the program to lead the marketing track toward innovation and student success. First and foremost, our students always come. And I also want to uh, provide my faculty with the time and resources so that they can engage in quality teaching and also be productive in their research. Among two new hires for the department focused on data and social media, Boren is also leading the push to develop the integrated marketing communications minor. So after talking with industry and meeting with journalism and graphics communication department chairs, we thought that there could be a need uh, or um, a reason to develop a minor in it. More than 100 applications for the minor were received by the department for only 40 open spots. Further improvements to the marketing track include a marketing-specific career fair and new data and analytics classes. 
Cal Poly's Financial Management Association held its first annual Futures in Finance Day. Cal Poly's top students interested in finance-related fields had the opportunity to network and interview with financial firms. After the networking session, students watched Cal Poly alum Peter Oppenheimer present a speech and answer questions as the keynote speaker. Peter Oppenheimer is the former Chief Financial Officer for Apple and donated $20 million last year to Cal Poly's College of Agriculture. Oppenheimer says Cal Poly is typically the largest school that Apple hires for finance positions. The Cal Poly graduates hit the ground running faster and harder than students that we hire from other schools and I attribute that to learn by doing, again, the very practical education that students get here at Cal Poly. According to the FMA, over 200 students registered for the event and got to net worth with financial firms like Yahoo, Google, and Apple. Coming up, find out how a Learn by Doing program at Cal Poly is bringing technology to the third world. One cultural club had their biggest philanthropy event of the year. Find out what drew more than 100 people over the weekend. Coming up after the break. I'm a teacher. Let me tell you what I make. I make learning a privilege, not a chore, and frustration a tool, not an obstacle. I make working hard seem easy and giving up impossible. I make an old subject feel like a fresh thought and unconventional methods common. I'm a teacher. I make more. Department has a reason to celebrate. I have the story. The Cal Poly Landscape Architecture Department ranked fourth in the country. It makes you feel proud to go to Cal Poly, uh, proud to call yourself a landscape architecture student. Design Intelligence asked real-world employers where they like to hire their landscape architects from, and students don't seem surprised to see Cal Poly on the list again. Uh, I think that's awesome, and it, it makes me uh, more excited to know like this is where I'll graduate from, or more, more excited to feel like I'll be able to get a job. Understanding how a space is used by people, by animals, um, the movement of water, just it's, it has a lot of different um, aspects to it. Omar Faruqi is the head of the accredited department. He says the diverse curriculum prepares students for the professional world. Just It is a lot of fun. It's a lot of work, but in the end it's worth it because you create really beautiful things and you get to see yourself develop, and I think that's a really special thing. Students say their classmates become their friends. Um, it's a lot of fun. We, we have a really cool community here. We have favorite thing, I guess, is like uh, is just the people. I think all the professors and all the students, like people that are here before me, it's really like communal. Everyone wants everyone else to do well. The department also received the highest ranking in the Western United States. 
Dr. Laura Haussmann and some Cal Poly students are working to bring digital libraries to rural communities in Micronesia. This week, they told us how Spell is changing lives on the other side of the world. Involved with Spell through knowing Dr. Haussmann and then applied to take this liberal arts and engineering studies course where all we did was work on Spell. I checked it out and actually um, was really, really intrigued by what my professor was doing, Professor Haussmann. Um, she was developing these solar powered educational learning libraries in order to deploy them into the Pacific region, uh, and specifically in Micronesia and Vanuatu. I designed the first uh, iteration of the device. So they're not actually that technically complicated at all, right? It doesn't take a lot of different skills. You know, a political scientist like me can put it together, right? That's the whole idea is that it is as basic as humanly possible. So here's how it works. Just turn this on, you can see the blinking lights. The computer has an SD card, a 32 gigabyte SD card, that we have loaded educational content onto in the form of a website. So it creates a Wi-Fi hotspot that's actually offline, but you can connect to it with any device that could connect to the internet. So any smartphone, any tablet, any laptop, any computer. I'm trying to bring in as many students to want to work on this as possible because we have a lot of plans for growing. It's also completely and utterly amazing and wonderful and awesome when those students get to come with me and see that for themselves. That's There's nothing like that on earth. We brought 25 libraries with us, so now I have a face to each library of the volunteer that is using that in their community. I know like the children that this is helping that thanked us over and over again and the teachers that got to use the different materials and were really excited about it. Seeing a little kid like watch a video, even though all the videos are educational, it's still fun for them. I definitely want to be as invested as possible because it was a life-changing trip for me. It's incredible when people are very grateful and it really makes you feel like you're making a difference in the world, making it a better place. Dr. Haussmann and her students will be building 30 spell devices at an appropriate tech workshop on Saturday, October 24th from 2 to 6 p.m. All Cal Poly students are welcome. A new club on campus has other Jewish affiliated clubs united under one message for students. The club held a Jewish and kosher food fair last Thursday on Dexter Lawn. The club, Mustangs United for Israel, will unite six Jewish and Israel affiliated clubs on campus as one entity that will put on events together. The first clubs held their first joint activity through the campus Shabbat last Thursday. The fair is meant to share with students the messages that clubs have in mind, which is to show the good things that Israel and Jewish Israel affiliated clubs bring to campus. People keep coming out to these events. I think it's really important people are aware of all the benefits and great things that Israel brings. Um, to the world around us and to come learn, come get food, kosher food, um, and it'll be all great from there. Mustangs United for Israel will receive its first official charter this week. Solutions through research and diet and exercise, or STRIDE, and Real Food Collaborative are collaborating together to host the first food day on campus. Representatives from both organizations have organized band performances, club booths, a speaker, and a panel. Real Foods will be selling food on the day of the event and will have a raffle with free food samples. The event is being funded by Stride in which they donated $2,500 for the representatives to use on their planning process. Well, we'd like students to leave with not only like a fun food day celebration, but also there's the educational portion with the speaker and the panel, and hopefully to get a better understanding about our role in the food system. The event will take place next Thursday, October 21st from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. at Dexter Lawn. Two events regarding agriculture, farming, and the drought are coming up in the next two weeks. On October 20th, the Slow County Food System Coalition is hosting a discussion on the future of farming in the changing climate. Topics being discussed include what changes we can expect to see in the next 30 to 45 years in Slow's environment and how ecosystem health can affect our own health. This event will take place on October 20th from 4 p.m. to 5.15 p.m. at the University of California Cooperative Extension Agriculture Auditorium, located on 21560 Way, next to the San Luis Obispo Health Department. On November 2nd, Mark Shepard, a member of Restoration Agriculture, Real World 
Permaculture for Farmers will be giving a discussion as part of the quarterly Sustainable Ag Lecture Series. Shepard will share the story of his farm and give an introduction to restoration agriculture, as well as discuss water management in times of flood and drought. This event will take place on November 2nd from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. at the Slow Grange Hall located at 2880 Broad Street near Staples. The Chinese Student Association had its annual Ultraman event this weekend. The event attended by more than 100 students is the largest annual gathering of the club. Ultraman pits teams against each other in an attempted to win a trophy at the end. The event included many games meant to build teamwork and cooperation. However, the most popular game is called Snake, in which teams try and grab flags while chained together. Ultraman made more than $500, which will go towards future events and charity. Coming up, we've had some funky weather with warm rain hey guys, yesterday. Find out what's coming up next week for weather right after the break. What I make, I make learning a privilege, not a chore, and frustration a tool, not an obstacle. I make working hard seem easy and giving up impossible. I make an old subject feel like a fresh thought and unconventional methods common. I'm a teacher. I make more. I guess sometimes things just happen. Devastating things. Your whole world changes in an instant. That's what happened to me the day my mother had a stroke. I'm Paul George, and I want you to spot a stroke fast. F, face drooping. A, arm weakness. S, speech difficulty. T, time to call 911. Protect the ones you love. Spot a stroke fast. They'll test you. Try to break your will. But however loud the loudness gets, however many cheese puffs may fly, you're the driver, the one in control. Stand firm. Just wait. And move only when you hear the click that says they're buckled in for the drive. Never give up till they buckle up. Who's on prompter? You make me wear my bike helmet. It taught me never to run with scissors. And to follow the swimming Find out the fuel that you tell me to stay away from drugs. Oh, okay. So I'm just doing this. So why do you keep a loaded gun in your drawer? How safe is that? You ask them to follow some safety rules. Now they're asking you. In fact, they're counting on you. Never let your gun get into the wrong hands. Remember, always lock it up. Visit ncpc.org. Hey guys, my name is Daniel Park and I'll be your meteorologist for today. As you can clearly see, we have humid mornings with cooler evenings all day this week, slight chance of rain till Sunday, and mid temps by the end of the week. Unfortunately, um, that also means that we're also going to have some rain days. I hate to be the bearer of bad news. All right, as you can see here, Paso Robles taking on 83, Creston taking on 80, Atascadero and Santa Margarita both taking in 80 degrees, and San Luis Obispo is the coolest with 74. All right, looking at the coast here, Cayucos, what a great place, has 72 degrees high, 60 degrees low, and all the way down to Oceano is 76 high and 60 degrees as well. As you can see, the night temperatures throughout the central coast will be around the same. And also, lastly, we have Royal Grande with 75 degrees and 60 degrees at night. We have Guadalupe at 75 degrees as well, a little warmer at 61 degrees at night. As we go further inland, though, as we go further inland, you'll expect slightly lower temperatures actually due to El Nino this week at 74 with Napomo, 73 Santa Margarita, Maria, and 71 at Vandenberg. The five-day forecast, as you can see, unfortunately, we're going to pretty much have rain all this week with the possible exception of today, tomorrow, and Saturday. The highest after that will be about 10 to 30 percent chance of rain afterwards. So unfortunately, no beach for this weekend. Back to you guys. Thank you, Daniel. Looks like the weather is going to start cooling down, get a little rain. It's great. I know, Daniel Park, always raining on my parade. But hey, at least this is going to help the drought a little bit, right, Allison? Yeah. 
Coming up, find out the fuel that keeps the blue-green rivalry burning. A UCSB Cal Poly special report is coming up after the break. The Cal Poly women's volleyball team is on a winning streak. See how they have performed against their opponents and what is to come. This job looks perfect. Uh, it says you need people skills. Check. Uh, driver's license. Check. And a high school diploma. You've got one of those, right? Skip the drama. Get your diploma. I got that. You are good to go. Take that first step towards a better future. Find free adult education classes at finishyourdiploma.org. I love taking care of my mom. It wasn't easy at first. She learned how to better communicate her needs. And you learned how to not ignore yours. I discovered how to make healthier meals. And I discovered how much I enjoyed them. Becoming a caregiver is a learning experience for everyone. Find articles, tips, and tools from experts and others who have been in your place. The Caregiving Resource Center at aarp.org slash caregiving. A full life measured in seats starts with the right ones early on. Car crashes are a leading killer of children 1 to 13. Learn how to prevent deaths and injuries by using the right car seat for your child's age and size. This is the moment I knew his future have no boundaries. There are some moments only the forest can inspire. Find yours at discovertheforest.org. MLB playoff races are red hot, but we're talking about the blue-green rivalry. Cal Poly has sold out the UCSB game at Spano Stadium every year since 2011. Reporter Alexa Brewington has a scoop on what keeps the blue-green rivalry rolling. Silent here at Spano Stadium as the bleachers and field are completely empty. However, come this Saturday game day, it will be a completely different scene. The stadium will be filled with thousands of fans as tickets are already sold out. Located just 100 miles away from each other, the rivalry between Cal Poly and UC Santa Barbara is known as the number one college soccer rivalry in the nation. It was pretty wild last year and just everybody there was like going crazy. I didn't like expect it to be that big of a deal, but it was just huge. Each year when these two teams play, attendance skyrockets, setting records for most fans attending a regular season game. Okay, we have 75 left out of the 8,000 that we allotted for students and we've sold just under 3,000. This Saturday will also create a new chapter in the blue-green rivalry for the Mustangs, as first-year head coach Steve Sampson makes his rivalry debut. Our players, they know that it's personal. They know that the uh, intensity is going to, to raise significantly. You need to get everything you have, all right, boys? Let's go. Let's go, man. And some upperclassmen are offering advice to those attending this event for the first time. Deck yourself out in Cal Poly colors as much as possible. Second, I'll explain, don't get there right before kickoff. You're not going to find a seat. You need to get there early. You need to find a seat. And third, just that moment right before kickoff where you can look around you and see your entire school surrounding you. It's just awesome. Alexa Burrington, Mustang News. And once again, all student and general admission tickets are sold out already. The Blue-Green Rivalry kicks off Saturday, October 17th at 7 p.m. The Cal Poly women's volleyball team got their fourth straight victory against UCSB on Saturday, October 10th. The Mustangs went for four sets against the Gauchos, but came, on, came out on top, giving the team its fourth straight victory. The Mustangs are now 12-4 overall this season and 4-1 and in Big West Conference play. Their next game is Friday, October 16th at 7 against Cal State Fullerton in Mott Athletic Center. And following that one up, another home match Saturday, October 17th, 7 p.m. against UC Riverside. The Cal Poly women's soccer team fell to Cal State Northridge 2-1 on Sunday, October 11th, Matador Field in Northridge. 
The Matadors took an early lead in the 14th minute of the game, but Cal Poly answered in the 31st minute, and it was not enough to get the victory final. The Mustangs are now 5-5-5 on the season and 1-3-0 in Big West Conference play. They look to redeem themselves in Santa Barbara against the Gauchos Thursday, October 15th at 7 p.m. The Cal Poly men and women's cross-country teams are looking forward to their championship part of the season. But more than that can happen, the Mustangs have a couple meets this weekend. The squad is being split up and will take part in two different meets this Saturday. Half the team is in Louisville, Kentucky to race in a high-caliber pre-national cross-country meet. This is the same course that will host the NCAA championships later on this fall. Those not traveling to Kentucky will be competing against CSU Bakersfield in the Cal Poly Invitational at the Quest of Fairbanks course. Races start 9 a.m. this Saturday. The Cal Poly football team fell to Eastern Washington 42-41 to in overtime after being up by 15 points in the fourth quarter. Eastern Washington answered the fourth quarter with 22 points that put them into overtime, ultimately giving them the W. Mustangs are now 2-4 and four overall and 1-2 and two in the Big Sky Conference. They have a bye this week before playing Portland State for homecoming Saturday, October 24th in Spano Stadium. Well, that's all the time we have for sports action today. It'll come back next week. Back to you guys at the desk. Thank you, Tom. Thanks for keeping us updated on how the Mustangs are doing. Well, if you love some of the biggest and best fruit around, we'll tell you where you can find yours tonight right after the break. This is why you took the second job. While you taught yourself how to fix the plumbing. While you'll do whatever it takes to keep your home. And that is why we want to help. We are making home affordable, a free government resource that can make paying the mortgage easier. Call 888-995-HOPE today. Cinderella found the pet that fits her perfectly. Daniel, can you tell them that? Tiana gave her pet the royal treatment. Belle found beauty where no one else did. And you Actually, can I don't have any shots left. Share your heart. Share your love. Bring home yeah, your forever I mean. I friend. Any... Make yeah. a shelter pet part of your world. Happily Ever After begins at the shelterpetproject.org. Every day across America, excess food is gathered by a network of good people at local food banks, giving hope to millions of children who struggle with hunger. They've earned their wings, and you can too. Together, we can solve child hunger. Support Feeding America and your local food bank at feedingamerica.org. I will not be news today. I will not make another push to be the first man in space with frosted tips and a puka shell necklace. And I will not go viral when my terror is caught on camera when I finally realize that in the vacuum of space, no one can hear you sing. I'm Lance Bass, and I will not be trending today because there is a much bigger story that needs to be heard. If you find yourself at the farmer's market tonight, you will be in the presence of some of the largest fruits in the world. The way off will begin at 6 p.m. in Mission Plaza. A screening of Devin Dorf's film, Rise of the Giants, will be screened at Avila Valley Barn on Friday the 16th and Friday the 30th. Costumes are not technically mandatory, but extremely encouraged. I like going to the events because they're just so massive and they're like these big, lumpy, beautiful objects that kind of seem magical because it doesn't seem like a, kid, like a fruit could grow that big. It seems a little bit like a fairy tale. The way off will begin at 6 p.m. in Mission Plaza. That's all we have for today. I'm Alice Nedmans. And I'm Allison Royal. Thanks for watching this special 30-minute edition of Mustang News. You can catch MustangNews.net for continuous updates.